Welcome to another episode of The, the Epic, Epic Family, Family Road, Road Trip. Trip. finding some really incredible trails and uh, today we're going to look for a camp spot by a river which on GPS shows way in the forest. We're kind of also using this opportunity before we really hit the road in a few weeks to do a shakedown of the vehicles, get back into things, get uh, make sure everything's working. Really the last big overlanding trip was Carol and I going from here all the way up to the Arctic Circle and back with Worsley last fall. So they've been just being used to you know go shopping uh, over the winter so shakedown trip is about to begin let's head down this trail I can see uh, we've got some snow patches but in general things have melted down pretty good so uh, let's head into the forest here and see what we can find So we just uh, headed down one of these little offshoots and we think it might lead to the river and potentially a nice campsite for tonight. This section is a boat launch, you can tell. Uh, this is where you can back a boat into the river here. But it looks like two rivers meet up here, so we're gonna go back. We saw a road going that way, and that might be a camp spot right by that kind of rapid area. But you can see the water's really high and it's just swirling around. It's all that spring runoff. But what a beautiful area. It's absolutely gorgeous. There's a couple of old boats here uh, tied to the trees, so it must be a popular fishing area in the summer. Last time we were here, I saw moose tracks in the deep snow, but now there's a whole print here. So that's exciting. No antlers? No <laughs> antlers yet. They're definitely digging for something. Like, look at that. Or it was running. Cause, yeah, it must have been running. A beautiful little spot that's a, a raging river right now it's definitely higher than most times a year you wouldn't want to get caught in that swirl but uh, it's beautiful it's, I think we should camp here and uh, that sound at night you know it's been a while since we camped by a beautiful river let's hike around see what we got but we're 
the flooding is so much we got water like standing water in the forest behind us and around us so at least this is nice and high yeah so even high. if a beaver dam broke we'd still we're be high. okay i think oh yeah we're high and dry here good but gotta keep lando out of the water there's so many moose tracks nice like all up and down all right so we like this spot we've uh, determined that we're going to set up here and get some food going it got a little colder so we're jacketing up there's still a lot of snow on the ground and maybe just because we're down here by the river but man it seems like the temperature dropped a couple degrees but we're going to turn these around and back them up towards the fire get them leveled up and start setting up camp we have no idea how exciting it is to be back in the jeeps and back camping uh, you, you don't know how much you miss it until you're away from it showing perfectly level here so I'm happy with that one degree is not going to make you have a bad sleep but it's all green We had such a good experience with our Starlink up at the cabin that we ended up buying one for the road. I know you could use the same one, but we've got it fully, like uh, permanently installed at the cabin and we don't want to have to uninstall it every time we go on a trip. So we've got one here. And uh, in order to run that, you just need a good stable electrical connection for the uh, router. It can't be turning on and off. But in Worsley here, we do have that. We've got the whole Red Arc system and uh, I think 300 amp hours of Battleborn lithium batteries. And I just checked here on the Red Vision and uh, we've got 85% charge on the batteries. We've had a lot of cloudy days, but today there's just a, uh, it's a off on sunny, cloudy mix. And so the solar panel up on the camper is charging those batteries up. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up that Starlink system and we'll get the ability to download and upload out here by the river. So this is the uh, satellite dish and you just gotta take it outside comes with a nice long line so you can find actually it's gonna be a little tricky for us to find a spot here because we're pretty heavily treed but we'll uh, we'll walk around until we can get a clear southern is it southern or northern I think it's uh, it's got to be pointing north so we'll look for a spot for that and then I'll go ahead and set up the router here plug it into our our red arc system and uh, see how it goes I might move out a little farther from these trees here. There's a bit of obstruction that way. But I think here we've got a pretty good unobstructed view of the sky. Let's just go out about 30 feet. This cable comes from the dish and plugs right into the bottom of the router here. And then you've got a power cable. I'm just going to set it up here temporarily. And then we're going to plug it in here. That's it. I think uh, I'm going to pull out my app see if we can connect to the uh, satellite and get some signal.
right, so we're just walking around looking for some firewood, and we noticed this little uh, birch stump that was obviously chewed on by a beaver, probably fairly recently. You can even see some of the sap that's been pouring out, it's frozen onto it, but uh, you know, since this tree's already been felled, then we might as well harvest what's left. I haven't pulled out the uh, Agawa Canyon saw in a while. It's a pretty handy thing. I almost forgot we had it. It's been a while. We have some uh, steak and uh, bell pepper kebabs here. And uh, it's kind of chilly tonight, so we're just getting our jet boil stove top going. It's cold enough that our uh, olive oil is frozen, but we'll warm that up. And everything's frozen, so we're just gonna take our time and cook this slowly and make a delicious meal. It already smells amazing. I'm gonna put that there and let the mayo. Sweet setup. This is perfect to just sit and be back in the Jeeps and relax um, right next to the river. And we're still kind of all a little bit uh, under the weather, I guess you could say. But this is the perfect area or place to just get better. We're going to call it a day and uh, probably just sit and edit and look over what we did today. And hope you guys have a good night.
All right, so we had a beauty night at that uh, river camp there. We all slept well, and it was a pretty good first camp. I think we still got it. But uh, now we're going to be heading deeper into the bush to try and find an even more remote camp. This is the spot where we turned right yesterday to get into the river. Gorgeous camp spot. Um, we're now going further in the bush. We're going to take this, continue down this road. There, there are tracks. It looks like someone has been here in the last couple of weeks. So uh, it's probably similar to what we just did getting into the river. So we're going to run into a bit of snow, but I don't think anything too tough. So let's head on in. We're going to follow the GPS track and look for another camp spot. By the looks of things, there should be plenty of beautiful spots back in here. If we go straight, that goes way back in here. It doesn't go river. to a lake, but it goes back to a river. That's one option. Or we can go this way. I don't know what that little red square is, but this goes back to a smaller trail, back to the river this way. But I want to try straight on and then cut into there. Sure. See, see if you can get it riding on top, and, and if not, we'll uh, play some rocks. Oh, it's that stuff. Let me back. We're familiar with this stuff. <laughs> this isn't snow. This is what we ran into in the spring in the mountains that time when we got stuck. It is ice pellets, if you could feel that. It's all ice. We were following some other tracks of someone else had come in here with a vehicle and it looks like this is where they got stuck and there's nothing going forward but deep snow. So we have to kind of make a decision. Could we get through this? Possibly, but it is, as far as I can see, like half a mile down the road is deep snow. Um, so it would be tough on the vehicles and take a lot of time. So. The other option is we've come over to this side which has been melted off down to grass but it's very muddy and soft and we don't want to completely destroy the side of the trail here. Um, we're all feeling under the weather still so I don't think we have the energy to do a whole bunch of uh, winch runs. So the decision seems to be that we're just going to get Dan unstuck here. He's slightly stuck, might have to pull out a winch and just tow him back a little bit, get him out of this little spot and then we'll head back the way we came and find a either go back to that same spot for the night or find another spot and then 
once this melts off in the next couple of days, we'll head back down this trail. Look at these moose tracks. Like you can see them, they're huge. I want to show you. Come here. You can see them along here. See the nice ones all the way along. The big back with the points in the front. Really cool. I want to keep going farther, but I've got to take care of this. This is uh, Warren's Spidura synthetic rope, so it's quite safe. It doesn't snap like a you know a steel rope would or a steel cable. But I'm going to put my jacket on it anyway for safety. Which, um, if it were to break, it would dampen the snapback. But this stuff is really cool. It's got reflective uh, line throughout it, so if you're winching at night and there's lights, you can clearly see your winch line. But yeah, let's give it a yank. It's not going to take too much probably to get him out of there. That should do it. A couple of tugs and we yanked him out. The rest of this he'll just keep moving and we'll be, we'll be out of here in a flash. Okay. Fine piece of equipment. Nice to have. So, I mean, those are realistic decisions you have to make in the overlanding world. You know, we're not trail runners for the fun of running trails. We're looking for a camp spot for the night, a nice safe place to set up camp for the night. So we don't really have to get down that road. If we were, you know, 100 kilometers in and the only, it was either forward or all the way back, that'd be a different story. We'd probably push through. But um, in this case, we're just looking for a camp. So we think going back, you know, to somewhere where we already know is a good place to, to spend the night is the best decision for tonight. Besides, Carol's tracking a moose right now, so <laughs> that's what our main objective is, is to have fun out here and enjoy ourselves. And as much as I wanted to catch a trout, and I did, Carol has been hunting for uh, moose antlers, and I really hope she finds one. If not on this trip, we're, we're gonna keep looking until we find another one. Just gonna go down and see where she is. She's gone into the bush with Lando. We think we found a really good spot here. It's nestled in a nice clearing. Um, we can hear the river in the distance. We're gonna pop up our tents, put together a meal, and uh, have a good night's sleep here. And in the meantime, we'll see you down the road.